bit about how labor rights fit into the big picture of food democracy. Uh, healthy, sustainable food for all with social justice for workers and consumers in the food system. So thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, mine doesn't rhyme, but I'll try my best. <laughs> um, my name is Stephanie Basile. I'm the director of grassroots communications for Brand Workers International. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our, our organization, some of the services we offer. I'm going to tell you about a major campaign we're undertaking right now, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how it uh, fits into the food democracy movement. So Brand Workers International is a nonprofit organization. We advocate for the rights of food and retail workers, and we empower them with different um, advocacy tools. We're relatively new. We were formed in 2007, and we were formed by current and former food and retail workers. And we decided to form the organization because we really felt that these were sectors of workers that just didn't really have a strong voice on the job. And um, you know, as you mentioned in your presentation, um, these workers are not paid well, they're not treated well. There's this perception that these are, this is unskilled work. Brand Workers argues it's not unskilled work, it's just skill that our society doesn't value. So we decided to come together to empower the workers and each other. We have three main areas of operation. The first is what we call a workplace justice campaign. This is a campaign that happens in coalition with labor unions, and it's a, it's a full-blown campaign aimed at helping a group of workers at a workplace <coughs> help gain justice at the job. And we use a multi-pronged approach that includes organizing, media, legal tools, grassroots communications, um, and uh, economic pressure. Um, right now, we have a focus on the food chain campaign. And the whole point of focus on the food chain is to get people to think about the different hands the food passes through before it ends up on your plate. Right now, our big campaign is at a seafood warehouse called Wild Edibles. And I'm going to talk a little bit of more, about more, uh, more about that in a moment. So that's our first area of operation. Our second is a service we offer called Legal Defense Plus. We have a network around the country of over 300 lawyers. And they've all committed to giving free legal advice to workers who need it. So we've helped some workers win some money from their employers. And we've helped some workers you know, even realize their rights. A lot of our outreach is about informing people who don't even know their rights are being violated. Our third component is our website, which is brandworkers.org. Now, the major part of our website is the Brand Workers blog. And this is important because it mainly focuses on the big name corporations. And these corporations get their message into the media all the time. They always get their side of the story out. And the idea of the blog is to offer another side, the people who were concerned about the political community and labor ramifications of what these corporations do. So if you go on our website, you could check out the blog. Um, so now, yes. Sorry, is, is, I'm not getting the first part, brand or brand? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, it's, it's a Brand Workers International. Thank you. And um, you know, that name comes because we work at some of the biggest brands. So Brand Workers, Thank you. no problem. Um, so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about one of our biggest campaigns. We've been, on, this is an ongoing campaign that's been going on for over a year and a half now. And as I mentioned, it's at a seafood company called Wild Edibles. Wild Edibles is a number one rated seafood company in New York City. They have a warehouse in Long Island City, Queens, with about 30 people working in it. And they also have three retail locations. Um, we've mainly been focusing on the warehouse, which is where most of the business comes from. The warehouse supplies seafood to some of the most prominent, uh, well-known, high-end restaurants in Manhattan, such as Tavern on the Green, Pastis, Union Square Cafe. In the summer of 2007, workers in the warehouse decided that they wanted to form a formal labor union, and they decided to organize with the union, the Industrial Workers of the World, the IWW. They had a lot of issues at the workplace. The biggest one was that they hadn't been paid overtime in years. Another issue is that they face a lot of racial discrimination. Um, the Latino workers never got raises, never got promotions. The boss also had a temper. There was a lot of disrespect, so they wanted respect. There are also some workplace safety issues. Uh, for example, they weren't given the proper equipment to safely cut the fish. So they decided to form a union. And when they tried to do this, the boss engaged in a very vicious anti-union campaign. He fired 12 out of the 30 warehouse workers for organizing with the union, which is illegal to fire somebody for organizing with the union. So in September of 07, brand workers decided to jump on this campaign and work in coalition with the union. And we launched a restaurant communications campaign. And the point of this campaign was, you know, we called it Focus on the Food Chain. So it was to go to the next level, from the warehouse delivering to the, the restaurants. 
we started encouraging the restaurants to not buy the seafood from Wild Edibles until they settle this labor dispute. So, you know, we got volunteers together to join the workers. We would go stand outside the restaurants and hand uh, flyers out to the customers and say, hey, you know, just so you know, the seafood here comes from a labor law violator. We just want you to know. And we've been doing this flyering three to four times a week, every week pretty much, for the past year and a half. And at this point, um, we're very happy to see that over 60 restaurants have decided that they're not going to support this company until they get their act together. Um, and one good thing we really like about the campaign, and one thing we like about food justice in general, is you know bringing people together. So this campaign incorporates you know workers working together with community activists, reaching out to customers. You know, so the customer will go into the restaurant with the flyer and say, "I don't want to support this. Why are you supporting a sweatshop?" And so it's been a really good way of you know kind of different sectors of community working together. And it's also put pressure on the boss to come negotiate. Uh, three or four times he sat down for negotiations. We're currently negotiating a global settlement right now, and we're confident that if it wasn't for this restaurant campaign, he wouldn't be negotiating. Because, you know, we filed several lawsuits, but you know how that goes. Unfortunately, it takes a very long time. And even when you do win a lawsuit, there's really no way of enforcing it. So we feel that this campaign has really shown us that having a collective action approach and an economic pressure approach is really a good way to make gains in a campaign. Um, are there any questions about this campaign? Wild Edibles campaign? What was the company again that you... Uh, wild Edibles. Wild Edibles. Mm -hmm. Wild Edibles. Mm -hmm. um, and so... A question? Oh, sure. I don't know if it's breaking it, should be the last one. Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, it looks like you're fighting against, uh, I don't want to use that word, but at mm -hmm. least uh, the powers that be that mm -hmm. are... Is it better to have a dialogue and offer a service rather than going head on? Mm -hmm. Um, that's a great point. Um, you know, I thank you for asking because I might have skipped over this. You always have to be diplomatic first, yeah. definitely. Um, so in the case of the Wild Little Bulls boss, we tried being diplomatic, but it was very quickly realized when he started firing and threatening people that he wouldn't be diplomatic. Um, in the case of the restaurant communications, first we'll send a letter to the restaurant owner, then we'll try to call them, then we'll visit them. We do all that before we flyer. And we kind of escalate, you know, we'll send a few more people flying. If it really comes to it once in a while, we've thrown a protest up at a restaurant. So we basically kind of use this escalation strategy because it does make sense to start nice and not go all out if you don't have to. So yeah, it's a great point. Um, and so there's a few different connections we see to, to the broader idea of food justice. The first one, which is a very direct connection, is we found that there's a direct correlation between working conditions at, a, at a, any kind of food establishment and the quality of the food. From our restaurant pressure, one thing we found from our research is that the restaurants who don't treat their own workers well and who don't really care that Wild Edibles is a sweatshop, they also have the most health code violations, multiple health code violations. And it makes sense because if they don't care about labor law, they're probably not going to care about self, uh, safety and health codes. The same thing goes for the Wild Edibles warehouse. Um, one thing I had mentioned is that they didn't get the proper equipment to cut fish. Another major problem in these warehouses is that the workers have to work at a very fast pace. They're often understaffed, working long hours. And you really don't want somebody handling the food you're going to eat who's working you know, a long shift on no sleep, understaffed. And this isn't Wild Edibles. This is all the food, or not all, but many of the food warehouses. You know, lining all these industrial neighborhoods in Brooklyn and Queens, there's tons of food warehouses. And they provide the food to all the supermarkets and all the restaurants throughout the city. And so one of Brand Worker's larger goal is for Wild Edibles to be the first one and to con really continue this campaign of justice so that we can spread from this point of production with the warehouses and increase the quality there and hopefully have that carry over through the supply chain. Um, and a lot of the demands that workers have kind of go hand in hand with these, you know, health and safety violations. You know, having a, a safer workplace, you're also going to have um, workers who are working better, and you're going to have a workplace that's more in compliance with health and safety violations. So we think as a labor movement, one thing we could do is put this on our agenda, compliance with health code and safety laws, you know, it makes sense. <laughs>